What is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. So today's video is a little bit different. Before we get into it, I want to explain uh, what we are doing. So what this is, is actually an episode from my podcast, the Work for Change podcast, uh, which I have been doing for years now. Uh, but what we did this week was we actually interviewed Ben Patrick, or he's better known as the knees over toes guy. Um, and we talked a lot about just healing your knees if you're dealing with any injuries. And he kind of shared his story of how he went from literally being told that he would never be able to bend his knees again to being able to dunk a basketball and he's helped literally thousands of other people that have had knee issues or just body issues rehab from those issues and be, be become stronger um after those issues were healed so I'm really, really excited. Uh, this was a, an interview that I was really, really wanted to do, and Ben was gracious enough to do it with us. Um, he is someone that has a ton of energy, so I, I really think that it was a great conversation. Um, if you do like the podcast, I will link down in the description. You guys can go check out. There's over a hundred video or over a hundred podcasts now uh, for you to check out if you do enjoy it. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into the topic. It's man, it's so interesting, like hearing because I, I mean, I've watched some of your interviews and I've watched like the methodology and I, we've been talking and stuff like texting. And it's it's really, really cool seeing how I can tell that you're just really passionate about this. And I can tell that that passion comes from lived experience and like there's nothing like it. Like that's one of the things that I think personally a lot of people are able to relate with me when it comes to weight loss and like helping them try to lose weight is that the reason I have so much passion for that is because I lived through it. Right. I was, I went through it and like for the, for you, I know that you've talked a lot about pain and I really, I think that that's a really interesting conversation um, that you've had is like when pain becomes part of your life, it becomes, it becomes really debilitating and you feel like you are your pain. Like it's like you, you can, everything about you is your pain. How do I avoid the pain? And you have, you have been able to get out of that. So like, when was the first time, cause you said like from 12 years old, like you said, like, how did you first start to notice like, man, my knees are not the same as every other, I mean, 12 year old, that's cr so crazy that it was so early. But when, when did you first start noticing that? Yeah, it was when I was 12. And, and dude, that's why I'm on this podcast with you. I wasn't even planning on doing any more podcasts this year. But I feel like you're the same as me, which is that, that like, we didn't set out thinking that we would be on social media, or it, it's not a it's not about that. It's just a necessary part of our passion of help because we lived it, you know, and it's, I still, it still hurts, you know, what I went through, as I'm sure you can relate, but not so much in a bad way, almost in a good way, because we've been able to overcome that. And we just don't want other people to unnecessarily, you know what I mean? Like, like we just wish, I don't know about for you, but for me, like all I'm trying to do is put out what I wish was there when I was 12. That's my whole, that's been my whole business motto for years. And now uh, you probably saw me on the Mark Bell podcast. I wasn't planning on doing any more podcasts after that. This is his hat. And and Mark kept me grounded on that because, you know, there's plenty of people telling me what I should do with my career. And Mark was like, don't do anything, you know, outside of what that 12 year old kid would want. You know, like, don't do something that the 12 year old kid would slap you for. You know what I mean? Like, so and that's and that's actually why I'm on this podcast, because I wasn't planning on doing anymore. And Mark was like, dude, if you have a good opportunity for a podcast, that 12 year old, you might have missed out on that data and he would slap you for not doing that podcast. So that's that's why I'm here. And yeah, it was, you know, when you're young, you're just told like, oh, it's growing pains or it's this or it's that. And, and, and really it was from 12 to 18, honestly, it was a constant process of not even really recognizing how bad things were in the sense that I always thought the next doctor or this surgery would handle it or this cream or this supplement that I, like, I always thought like, cause you know, everyone be, oh yeah, just take, you know, just take these twice a day. Oh, just ice it. Yeah. yeah just, I, so like, I, I always thought like, okay, this should handle, this should handle, this should handle, this should, you know what I mean? So that's really how it was. It was just kind of a gradual process of, you know, and, and I knew I was different, but it was really just because honestly, a lot of basketball players and a lot of people are going through this with their knees, just as I'm obsessive on this, I was obsessive on basketball. So I would get up at 5. AM strap up ankle weights, dribble two miles through my neighborhood, dribbling two basketballs at break time at school. I would sneak out. I wouldn't go get a snack like the other kids. I would go down this back door, strap up jump soles on my feet and be doing plyometrics. Then at lunch, I wasn't playing with the other kids. I was back practicing after school. 
I would get out as early as I could. And then I'd go practice at the YMCA all night. So I simply used up my knees and beat up my knees very, very soon. So by the time I was 14, where some kids are like, Hey, I've been playing these different sports. Maybe I'll you know, go more serious. No, for me at, by 14, I was already, my nickname was already old man. Cause I was so, my knees were so overused on basketball. I'd have to get to practice half an hour before everyone else so that I could join the team. Like I couldn't just, you know, it, it's funny now. Cause people are like, Oh man, what it's like to be young, 15, 16, you know, 18. And then, and I'm like, fuck life was hell at those ages because my knees were in such terrible chronic pain and so stiff. And when you're that stiff and stuff, you then miss out on all those key development testosterone years when muscles should have been forming and I should have been jumping higher. So I also wound up with absolutely the most pathetic jumping so slow. So it wasn't just my knees. I was ridiculed for how slow I was for being the lowest jumper, never grabbed rim till my twenties. And now you see me dunking all kinds of which ways, but it's really just because it's really just because I figured out my knees that allowed me to do that. In fact, my whole jumping system is literally simpler than any jumping system that I've ever seen. I have a jump video coming out tomorrow and you'll see exactly what I mean. It's like, it's so ridiculously simple. It's completely free. I, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's that simple. You can, I could explain everything I know about jumping in like 10 minutes, man. I, Oh, there's so much there, but I mean, I just kind of want to go into how you started working on that. But before we get into that, I want to say like how I even found you. Okay. I was literally cooking my stir fry that I make every night, just like surfing YouTube. And then I saw, I think it was one of your videos. I'm pretty sure it was one of your videos where you were talking about your knees and I don't know why I clicked on it, but I clicked on it and it, dude, if you guys, if you guys that are watching right now live and that are listening to the podcast later, go watch his YouTube videos. They're Un, there, it's not even one. It's incredible what he's able to do, but he is so enthusiastic. It's infectious. It's infectious. I was like, I don't even really have knee problems, but I want to work on my knees. Like it's, it was incredible, man. I was, I was, I was hooked that night. So when I watched those videos, it was literally the same night as when I sent you the message on Instagram. I was like, yo, I didn't think I wasn't even sure if you would reply, but I was like, I think it would be awesome to just have a conversation on my podcast because it was just like it was incredible. And then because, and we've been of texting course, ever since. We yeah, seriously, we've been texting ever since, and I've been I've been watching the videos like constantly since then. It's so interesting, and it's so like I said, it's so like motivating, and like I can tell that the passion comes from the the pain. I guess it sounds kind of uh, over the top, but like. That's, that's where it comes from. I, at least for me, that's definitely where it comes from. And so for you, so you, you're 18 years old or, or whatever age and you're like, okay, I've gone to the doctor. I've, I think you've had surgeries and stuff like that. Like all of this stuff is supposed to fix me and I'm not fixed yet. What was the thing that you were like, wh when was the day I call it my click moment when I started losing weight? Like, was there a click moment for you where yeah. you were like, you found something and you're like, oh, I can do something else to maybe quote unquote, fix this or rehab this that I haven't been told about before? Well, I was, I was at a doctor's office and one of my knees has like artificial kneecap, meniscus replacement, quad tendon repair, it's got all kinds of junk. The other knees never had a, a surgery. And I was in a doctor's office because now I had tears in the, in the right knee. Hmm. And so it was at that moment that it was like, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm just going to try natural means. You know what I mean? And it was a definite moment. And it was after doing a week straight of doing like basically backwards sled, but I, I had, I would just put my car in neutral. Um, and my buddy would steer the car and I'd find like a flat, you know, so now it works so well. Then I quickly got a sled and, you know, took it from, from there. But I would put my butt against the car, the car's off. So I have to just use my strength backwards to get it moving. So this is not ice, not pain, kit, not foam. Run up. It's just get my fucking knees stronger, but it's mm -hmm. so gentle. And within a week, honestly, I knew I would never be the same. My life has never been the same since I knew I would never, but I mean, I was pushing, remember how obsessive I was, right? So I would go to the point that the burn in my legs was so fierce, but it was beautiful. And I've helped thousands of people achieve this moment where you're going backwards. This can be stepping onto a treadmill, turning it off and getting the wheel to spin backwards. It can be dragging a sled backwards. It could be a hill can kind of work, but you do have to come back down. So I, I would recommend that for someone a little more advanced or take, you know, be very slow on the way down. 
but a car in neutral, a treadmill not turned on, a sled, those would be the three most go-to ways. And thousands of people have now had this experience where the harder you work, the more your knee pain goes away. And so doing this every day with literally within a week, I knew I'd never be the same. Didn't take anything complete. Now it was totally degrees of that. It's not like I was then dunking it. You see, so it's, it, it's been degrees of that. And so now my whole career has been trying to put this together in the safest order. So like no one's required to do any program. It's the data is all there. You can request whatever someone could sign up for a month and literally learn everything and every program I have, but I stage it so that what I found works best is 12 weeks that you're literally just doing the backwards and mastering your body weight. Like that's it. Like you're not even adding weight. Then you're gradually adding weight for 12 weeks. Then you're doing what would appear to be more like a cool program. You know what I mean? For 12 weeks, but it's like, like a 12 week gradual adding load and 12 week body weight only that really help that smooth out. So yeah, I guess, I guess there's my career in a nutshell. And it was from, it was from figuring out this, this backwards concept, which I got from a guy named Charles Poliquin, who like myself, um, really is built on like, I think we're underrated in terms of our obsession with science, but that doesn't mean that we're following. Not that much has been studied yet. Like there's not one good study on dragging a sled backwards for your knees, even though it's helped tens of thousands of people. You see what I mean? So there's, there's what's been studied, but then there's actually like what the top athletes in the world are doing, what the most successful people are doing. So it would be like trying to go to college to learn how to create Facebook. Sorry. Like it's too late. It's too late. It's too. So whatever you go to college for is 20, 30 years behind what I'm doing right now. And it's, it's scalable. It's measurable. It's following clues from science. So this guy, Charles Poliquin, who has so many haters, yet he's trained 286 Olympic medalists, most in history. He's simply the most successful trainer of the human body. And what's interesting about him is like, no offense, but you could be Tom Brady's trainer, right? But it's not like Tom Brady has like a 40 inch vertical or runs a four, four 40, mm-hmm. but you could like be his trainer and become like wicked famous just because he's fucking Tom Brady. You know what I mean? But in Olympic sports, like no one gives a fuck. Like you run the hurdles this fast. Like you either get faster at the hurdles or you don't, there's not as much skill component that you can be like a shit trainer, it, which I'm not saying Tom Brady's trainer is. I don't even know his trainer. You get my point is just that it's harder to luck out in Olympic sports. It's harder to make credit off Michael Jordan hitting a jump shot, you know, when he's just MJ, right? Perfect example is Michael Jordan's famous trainer, who I have a ton of respect for, right? But Michael Jordan was already back to back slam dunk champion of the NBA prior to even meeting him. And you can look on tape. He never jumped even one inch higher yet. That's the number one selling jump book of all time with Michael Jordan's cover on it mm-hmm. that I did religiously. That was put one of the things that destroyed my knees. So here's something that literally has zero results for Michael Jordan. He was already back to back slam dunk champion and the trainer handpicked and thought, wow, I want to become MJ's trainer. That became the number one selling jump book that did not make Jordan jump higher. Factually, like just facts. I only deal in facts. I don't have opinions or egos. Charles was the same way. And so Charles was older. Charles is is dead now, sadly. I think he's the biggest genius in training ever. But Charles was older, so he didn't have, there there wasn't images of him doing this. It was just written stuff. So Charles gave me the clues I then went and learned from Charles in person. I paid a thousand bucks a day to learn from him. So yeah, I might not have been in college learning it, but that's because even when I was in college, I was having to lie on tests, like proven lies. And I was having to lie on tests to pass that the exercise science course. So I dropped out. I had full college basketball scholarships. I don't know anyone who's had full sports scholarships, everything paid for and dropped out so that they could actually be helping people instead of just continuing to go to school. So Charles became my mentor. And then there was a lot of videos of a guy named Keegan Smith, an Australian guy. And so I started, Keegan was actually the first videos I saw of these concepts. And then Keegan's been, been now my more close mentor ever since. And to this day, Keegan's like my best friend in, in training. And we we're not in the same business, but like I run ATG, like that's my business. And he runs ATG for coaches. Like he was, he's been my coaching mentor. And so he literally certifies people in everything that I do now. So, you know, sorry, sorry to rant on that, but that's exactly what occurred is I got Charles Poliquin as a mentor who Charles led me to Keegan Smith, 
and, and the rest is history from there. And it's really a concept of the stronger you are in reverse of what hurts, the less that hurts. It's really that simple. Yeah, it's 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 really interesting, and yeah, don't don't apologize for the rant. I mean, I thought it was great. Again, it just shows that you care about this stuff. Uh, the thing that I think is really interesting. So I myself have had, I have really, really, really. We we talked about this already, but I have really terrible ankle mobility. Like it's been something that's been a, a problem since I I have a suspicion. I obviously can't say this is what it was, but I think it was from because when I was overweight, you know, three hundred plus pounds, I used to skateboard everywhere. I fell a lot, so I I think I have some sort of scar tissue or something going on in my ankles that makes it difficult for them to, you know, for them to move and, and move correctly. And so, uh, like Definitely. when I, when I, when I watch your stuff, like I personally, my knees are re- like, I've never had really knee problems, but I've had ankle like issues that have made being athletic really difficult. Like I don't move the same way that you would expect someone to move. Like, so I've been doing CrossFit for like five years and you'd think someone that's done that, like that requires quite a bit of mobility. If you saw me, <laughs> you'd be like, how is this guy doing CrossFit? Because I have to warm up forever with my ankles. Like if I'm doing a thrusters, right? So that's like basically a front squat into like a overhead press. Like I have to warm up my, my shoulder, my, my, like my everything. It takes forever. So like when you were explaining, you used to have to show up to freaking uh, practice 30 minutes early. That's what I used to have to do for every workout at CrossFit. Like I'd have to show up 20 to 30 minutes early. Now's, like, now's zero. I, I just get to start. Yeah. And like, that's so much better for your life, Mm -hmm. more time with your kids, more time with your family. And I have a reverse theory on this that I've never really, even for me, it's taken a while to fully realize it. Okay. I stopped doing anything for warmups or anything for recovery. I stopped as a trainer thinking, okay, if I stop anything to assist, it'll force me to get the tools themselves so sharp and so scalable. You've seen my videos. My mom can do these exercises, right? Like it has to be so scalable, right? I actually think I stumbled on something fucking incredible, which is that if you don't have anything to help out, then you have to legitimately handle your issues. So now I've just, since I've been a trainer helping people, like I just keep getting more freakishly bulletproof and athletic thinking like, Oh, I'll wear down my own body, not do anything for recovery, not do anything to warm up. But it's been the opposite because now it's made me get the tools so sharp. You know what I mean? And I'll give – is this like live recording? Yeah, it's live recording. But if you want to show us some stuff, we're down. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just going to show like I hate just like talking about shit and not backing up what I'm talking about. Oh, wait. Is that – No, no it, was actually, it was actually better flipped that way. Oh, honestly. okay, yep. good. Yeah, that looks Holy good. crap. There's so much glare. I'm trying to just see here. All right. <laughs> So let me think of two things that would be, um, all right, I'm going to think of three things that would be like, that would be like tough, right? So you, Mm -hmm. you talk about your ankle mobility yeah, and you see me using and yeah, people are like, oh, but I don't have that equipment for that, for the thing I do for the ankles. But yeah, it's like a hundred bucks when you go on and it's, it's Australian money. So I don't know. It looks like 150 or whatever. I've I've already, it's like like a hundred bucks, (laughs) right? I have one on the way right now. (laughs) Every treadmill costs like three, $4,000. So like in the scheme of things. I only use cheap stuff, but so this, like, I don't have, I don't have shoes on. And so I can get my hamstring to cover my calf without my, my heel touching my back knee, not touching the floor. So this would represent like world-class ankle mobility. How about, Mm -hmm. how about cold doing a splits? (laughs) Now, wait a second. If I can do that, I mean, stuff like stuff like uh, pistol squats, like I could, like, there's no, I mean, that's so, those would be like some things that, Right. So my dog's over here. He literally tries to get in like every video. Like he comes over. <laughs> yeah. People think I saved him in the video. He just, he just walk and somehow he like knows where my phone is. So he just like, <laughs> um, no, but like but that, look, that if shows I can do the splits cold, ex- exactly. what am I? It, well, that shows like, even though you were showing more ankle mobility stuff, if you got messed up knees, you're not doing pistol squats. Like it's not happening. And like, the fact, like, I, I do, again, I've been in CrossFit Ankle, forever, and, like, hamstring, absolutely. It's, like, I mean, it, they're, in, in they're those, incredibly In those three little difficult. demos, I just showed it. Absolutely. Right. So, like, not, I didn't mean to cut you off, but just, like, in those three demos, that shows a lot, right? I would have to be scared. If my hamstring wasn't crazy healthy, right, I'd have to be scared to go into a split live. Like, I could fuck up my business. No, like, mm-hmm. I do this shit all the time live. You see what I mean? So, 
so yeah, like everything, but see if you, if you can't do all the band-aid methods, if you can't do all the recovery shit, I, I don't take any supplements for anything. Well, then you have to actually get bulletproof. Now, can you imagine what it feels like when I do get warmed up? That's mm-hmm. why I'm so hyped in the videos because I'm honestly like, naturally, I'm too passive. I'm too nice. I'm soft. I'm scared. I'm not a bold person. I grew up like that my whole life. Mm-hmm. So now, now when I get a little adrenaline flying, I'm like, I'm like fucking King Kong, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, that's how <laughs> yeah. I feel because I was so fragile for so long that now when I get warmed up and I'm like actually playing basketball and shit, I literally feel like I'm fucking Michael Jordan in my mind. You know what I mean? So, but it's because I'm not just having a warm up to feel good. So now what, what I used to have to warm up to be here. Now I'm just here always. So now, mm-hmm. now when I do get warmed up, it's literally like a, like a euphoric experience to like Dude, play basketball and shit. I it's, it's crazy how much I can relate to this. And it's so, it's so different, but like the, the underlying message that you're sharing is, is the same. So like right now I'm training for a triathlon. So I'm doing quite a bit of biking and running and swimming. And so for me running for most of my life, I, I couldn't do it. I could not run. Right. Like it was either I could or maybe I was able to run for like 10 seconds <laughs> and it didn't matter how fast I was going. Like that's as much as I could do. And so like that's one thing like when I when I finish a run, I'm always just so I think a lot of it is I'm grateful that I'm able to do it. Like it's such and it, and it hypes me up like it's so exciting because for so so many years of my life, I felt like I was, it was done. Like, it's not happening anymore. You're not running. Like, sorry, you're too fat. Like, that's how it felt, right? Because it just wasn't happening. And I'm sure it's the same thing with you, like with, with your knee, like with jumping and all of it. It was like, I'm too broken. Not going to happen anymore. I just need to accept it at some point. And then you decided to fix it. And it's like so exciting when you fix it yourself and you figure things out yourself to do that. You're like, you just want to get on the mountaintops and freaking shout to people like, I can help you. Like, I'm not, because I, I say this all the time. I know I'm ranting now, but I get excited about this stuff. I say this oh, yeah, all the yeah. time when I when I when people ask me stuff. It's like I'm like I'm not special. There is nothing at all special about me in any capacity when it comes to losing weight. I was a normal dude. Like I ate too much food. I didn't move enough. I gained a lot of weight, and I was able to lose the weight by just doing simple things over a long period of time. And I know you talk about that a lot. Like this Same. takes time, like to get to where Same. you are. And so like it's it I I can just feel the passion and it's it's a hundred percent like I feel the same way maybe in a different aspect but like I can get where that comes from. No, I, I love the running analogy and like you want to just like be on the map because like all right star basketball players they dunk in their sleep. I know guys have been dunking since they were like twelve. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For me, when I play basketball and I get to like dunk after, it's still surreal. You know, like I wake up in the morning like like was that a dream? Oh shit. Like I can actually dunk. You know what I mean? Like you want to just like lay in the rain, listening to like a modest Yahoo song after playing basketball, (laughs) but to someone, but to someone else, it's like literally nothing. You know what I mean? So, Mm -hmm. you know, we all, everyone has their own way that they can be helpful in life. You know what I mean? And you and I have like pretty simple ways of being helpful that for certain people like us, that's going to mean a lot, you know, it's going to be varying degrees, you know? Um, so I think it's pretty similar, you know, why we do what we do. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing that I want to talk about, I know that I'm kind of, I, I just, this is something that I really want to talk about is, is like kind of about pain and about like working through pain. I know that's not what you like to do, but like a lot of people, and I've seen it in the, the live chat, a lot of people are like, well, I have knee issues. I have shoulder issues that I have pain. Like this sounds scary. Like it sounds scary to do that. Like, and I know that for you, you talk a lot about like when, like you have the regressions, right? Everything is really scalable. You have, you can show people how to do things without going through pain. Uh, so like, I would just like, what's your philosophy on that? If someone comes to you and they do have pain, how do you work through that? I know everyone is very specific, but like, I guess just an overview on that kind of idea that you have. Yeah. I mean, the first amazing thing is that just by walking backwards, ideally dragging a sled backwards or going backwards on a treadmill that's turned off, like, it literally makes your pain go away as you do it. You see what I mean? So like, that's the coolest thing right off the bat is that just this concept of not sprinting or running forwards, but just going backwards. It actually puts us in positionings where the muscles take over and it doesn't hurt that much. So you see, I go to great lengths to like popularize these beginning things. So that's the first concept right there. And then number two is the second area that I work 
to protect the knees is below the knees and it's that tibialis muscle. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I've innovated more for training that than any trainer ever has. I've been more obsessed with that than any trainer has because it sucks when you have the pain and you can't even get into the exercises. So I described the first one of going backwards with a sled or a dead mill or whatever, but then you have the tibialis raise that you could start with only your body weight. I have a free video on that, you know, on YouTube. Um, and I put it in a bazillion videos. So mm -hmm. that's amazing when you start feeling burn in all these muscles below the knees without even having to bend, bend your knees. You see, I mean, so the, the whole system kind of goes in that order of like, it's built for the person like with the most pain, but again, the better you get, well, then it's like, you just get more bulletproof, you get more athletic, but it's, it's really built on like, how do you get into exercise without your knees hurting? You see, I mean, that was my problem. People, Oh, just do leg extensions for it. Just do lunges for it. But like, I couldn't do those things without crazy pain. You see mm -hmm. what I mean? So the whole system is built on sneaky strategies of how to actually start strengthening the muscles you do need to strengthen without it hurting to do so. Yeah, and I think that a lot of people get very scared because we've we've grown up with rice, right? Raise, ice, compress, elevate, I think is what it is. Um, yeah. So we've grown yeah, up with like when rest, rest, rest ice, there we compression, go. elevation. Yeah. So yep. whenever whenever anyone feels any pain, they're like it, society almost oh, society. I hate that word, but like people, everyone's like, you just need yeah. to rest. You need to rest. You need to rest. Don't don't now, work Google out. Google tells do you. Yeah. Like if Google your knee hurts, you. like Google. So like. Google tells you rest, ice, compress, elevate, except the guy who made up rest, ice, compress, elevate has since said he was wrong. Gabe Merkin, the doctor who made up the rice formula, rest, ice, compression of it, said he was wrong. When you have an acute pain, if you get elbowed in the nose, that's very different than having knee pain for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. When you ice a chronic condition, you make it more chronic. Yeah. And, and, and again, you don't have to take my word for it. Take the word of the guy who made the formula that you think you're supposed to follow, that Google's telling you to follow, that he has sent, said, wait, that was wrong. It appears to help, but it actually is a long-term disaster. It shuts off your body's own healing. It starts dulling the nerves. I used to ice my knees four times a day. I used to take painkillers like a motherfucker. I used, to, I used to do all these things, and I stayed in disaster zone. It makes you more likely to have a, a, nasty, a nasty tear versus just letting your body heal itself, observing where are you at, and then doing something to actually get strong in reverse of those pains. So then those same things that once did hurt, that once were hard, now are easy. Now can't, you got your muscle, so you got to improve the muscle. Then you got your tendon, we got to improve the tendon. Then inside, then you got the ligaments, the cartilage, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we, we're, we're literally just creating measurable protection. But if I jumped off a skyscraper, I'd still die. Life, yeah. is, life is hard. Like we're just making it a little easier and then it could be a lot more enjoyable, but like life is still life. You, there's no, there's nothing in this life that you can just wave a magic wand and then the rest of life is just blissful without you being involved in the process there. If it could be that easy, it would be worse because then life wouldn't even be a game. What if there was just like, everyone would want, if you could just like wave a magic wand and, and make money, but you'd probably find yourself the most depressed person in the world because now you have no challenges. No, there's nothing to, you know, there's nothing to, and pursue. you're not going to be no. appreciative of it as well. Exactly. So the point is just that we're just working on this math equation. And then, yeah, life doesn't have to be as messed up. You might not have to end up with a, with a surgery, which is just really nasty and then makes things even worse. And then, you know, so, uh, it's just a whole nasty bunch of shit you could go through and, and we can, we can prevent all that at least statistically to a great degree. You know, if you're going to be an extreme sport athlete, yeah, you would have less chance, but you look at some of these guys who it's like, I've had 27 broken, but all right, maybe you have 13, <laughs> you know, what if like, like it doesn't, it doesn't just magically make life stop being, you know, real life. I think one thing that really helps is because like a lot of pain, I know there's a lot of research. So I'm not acting like I am at all a professional, but I know there's a lot of research that talks about how much pain is perceived pain as far as like you're scared to do X. So you feel like there's a lot more pain than there is. So an example is myself. I, I hurt my back about a year ago um, doing like a CrossFit workout um, or doing just this thing called the devil's press. And um, I ended up 
like I was terrified. I had, I, it was like not very, very good, not, not very good. Um, and then I, but I worked with a, a physical therapist who has a very similar ideology to you where it's like his, his name is the movement doctor. So he's like p- fixing pain through movement. And a lot of people, you know, shared their opinions. Cause like the next day after I posted that I'd hurt my back, I was doing some pushups, just stuff that I could do in that moment because my back was hurting. And people were like, you're an idiot. You should just, you need to stop moving. You need to not do anything when it was more like, let's find out what you can do and do that. And then eventually like a little bit over time and over time and over time, you could, I could do more and more and more, but it was like finding that line for me. It was like, where is it actually pain? And where is it just my fear of pain that is pushing me to not try that thing? Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, the, the death sentence for the body is when you start avoiding something that's the same for any problem. That's why we have trillions of dollars of debt in this country. You know, like when you start avoiding a problem, it it can just really become a disaster, you know? So like for your back, like I would get so many people would start training with me and they'd be like, Oh, my doctor says I can't bend my back. Like, well, that's a freaking death sentence for your back. Yeah. What if you have to pick up a pencil off the ground? You know what I mean? Like, but why? So I, I helped my dad recently. He got a back extension machine at home. He'd put his hands on it so that it's assisted with his hands. And he would just do one single rep on a back extension. And then just gradually improve that. Mm-hmm. And now his back has improved a ton. So like that's the trick of life really is just confronting something on a gradual scale. Yeah, at the top, like I mentioned, if I jump off, you see me jump off shit, right? If it goes high enough, I'm dead. So like, the whole idea is to find in a starting point where you are safe, but now you put a little more money in the bank and a little more money. So it becomes, you get more protection, then you get less fear. So yeah, I would, I would be just as vehemently against, uh, not doing anything and trying to do, you know, trying to start way too high of a level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, like people would say like, Oh, deadlifts will strengthen your back. I mean, sure. But like, that could be a disaster if you just start someone with back pain yeah. on debt, you know? So, yeah. but, but again, I'm just as against saying, don't bend your, I mean, it's like, it's like brutal when I, when I hear that, you know what I mean? So yeah. you went to the movement doctor. Mm-hmm. Well, the guy who, who made the rice formula, who said he was wrong, like the very first, I think it's, I forget what it is now, but it's basically motion is in there. Like mm-hmm. our body needs motion. You see what I mean? It, life is not going to be this state where we're just, where our bodies are never going to move and we just lay in bed and we feel nothing. You know what I mean? So, so motion is really how we cause stimulus in our body to produce muscles and, te- and, and strength and tendons and then protect areas. You just have to have a, you just have to have a good doctor, a trainer who knows which muscles do which thing, mm-hmm. you know, if you have, it's even been found, you could work through a two or a three on a scale of 10 and actually make results with that. Now I try to find that zone where you don't have pain and it feels really good because you, because you feel the right muscles working. You see, like, like, it's like, holy shit, like, like a burn from head, like you really feel it work. That's the zone I'm trying to get to Mm -hmm. without pain. But again, in terms of the science on it, it's even shown that a two or a three, if you're actually using correct, like physio style, like exercises that help prevent, that are proven to help prevent pain, even working through a two or a three, according to the science does work. Yeah. And I think another thing that a lot of people, and like when I say this, it was me. <laughs> I was a lot of people. I was a person that struggled with this is like, we, we go from in our heads when something hurts, it's like, I can't do that at all. So like, say before I was able to squat, you know, my, my heaviest squat was 390, Right. And so if I tried to do that right now it would be a bad idea. So in my head, I would tell myself like, after I hurt myself, Oh, I can't squat. I can't squat. But it's like, well, no, I can't squat. 390 right now but I can do an air squat so you can squat you just can't squat to the level that maybe you were able to before and I think that that when I was speaking with with uh, that guy the movement doc that was something that really helped me he's like you when you when you start to play with like I can't do it it's it's it, I'm not allowed I can't it's like you're telling yourself that's the narrative that you're now telling yourself so you're gonna believe that because you're telling yourself it constantly if you're like it's another thing that he's talked about like when you get an MRI if they say you have a herniated disc or something like that A lot of people are like, I have a herniated disc. That is my, that is who I am. I'm a person with a herniated disc. So I can't do this, 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 this. And so he was always like, he was very like adamant about being like, 
I don't, you don't need to get an MRI because yes, you did something to your back, obviously, but like the, the way that we're going to fix it is the same regardless of how, you know, regardless of whatever I, the, the pain I, I is. I love it. I love this guy. Yeah. Oh, you guys would get along very much. A hundred percent. Yeah. And yeah, you're right. You're right on the money with that. And those labels, it, it's, it's interesting. Are the, you know, are the labels doing more harm than good? Look, I think, I think we could, could still have the labels and all that stuff, but the, the doctor should be educated on what you're saying as well. So that the doctor can say, look, this is the, the label, but here, here's the route, how we're going to fix that. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I get the exact same thing, dude. I had Osgood Schlatter's disease, chondromalacia, patella, patellofemoral pain syndrome. Dude, when you have a syndrome yeah. and you're like in your teens and you have a fucking sin, like, guys, do you understand? Like, I have a syndrome yeah. here. <laughs> like, I'm, th- I'm turning 30 this year. I don't even know what a syndrome is, but it sounds <laughs> terrible, right? So I had a syndrome in my knees. I had Latin words that I can barely pronounce now. You know what I mean? But, and like you said, like you think like, like my name's Ben and I have a syndrome. Like that's who I am. Like yeah. not realizing that I could be dragged and totally rehabilitate myself so simply. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think I lost the audio there. Yeah, no, it's all, it, it came back. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's so, I mean, cause this has been something that I've, like I've been dealing with basically for like a year with the back. And so I've, I've done a lot of research, like trying to figure out as much as I can. Obviously I'm, I'm not an expert in like uh, this podcast isn't trying to answer all the questions, but it, I think it, it goes to show like, obviously what you're saying is resonating with a lot of people because you are uh, like the, the things that you are saying, the videos that you're making, like they're blowing up for lack of a better term. And like, I can, I know that that's not why you're doing it, but, it's obviously helping people. And so I just, when I saw the videos, man, I just had to have the conversation. I guess like um, the last thing that I wanted to kind of talk about is like, if someone is interested in this, I'm not trying to make you do a pitch or anything like that, but like if someone is interested, they have knee pain, they have like just diff- different things that are going on and they want to try this. Like what would your like recommendation be? I know that you have your programs and stuff, but like, what do you, what do you say to that person that's like feeling stuck with their knees that want to work on it, but they don't know exactly how? Um, the audio is going out, but I think you're saying like where to start. Yeah, pretty much. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the big two to start really is this concept of going backwards and like actually getting a burn going backwards. And, and the second one would be the tibialis raise. Now I have, you know, I, you see in my YouTube videos, like I don't have any secrets, but for someone who wants to be coached through this, yeah, I set up a business, which is what I wish existed when I was 12, 14, 16. I, I just set up the, even into my twenties. Cause I had to go pay a thousand dollars a day to learn from Charles Polk. And you know, so like I have his knowledge and it's like fucking cheap as hell now. And you get coached through it only by myself and real people who went through it, had their lives changed and then are like, dude, I would kill the work for you. You know, that's literally like how our business. And it's like, Oh, actually I need some help now. So there's no secrets. You can learn all my programs on the site, literally like with the schedule and everything. We then have an app that you get to do it. You get to film anything you're doing, send in your form and have it coached by us. And we do that under 24 hours. Like we're, we're all like, you know, grinders. Now we're, we're very systematized. It's extremely organized. We have killer, we have a killer web developer. So your app account's already made, download a QR code. Our starting body weight program's already there, but you can, anytime you could request to do the one where you gradually add load or the one where you are now doing like a more full, full body strength program. Each of them is like full body, but it gets, like I said, only body weight, gradual load, all that stuff is on my site. Theoretically, someone can sign up in the first month that's just like our policy because like if someone likes it they'll want to stay on you we're not trying to trick anyone so theoretically someone for 24 dollars and 75 cents could learn everything that cost me tens of thousands of dollars in you know a, a decade to learn they could do a month and cancel so my sales pitch is always the same i want to have a business where i don't have to make a sales pitch i can literally just explain like exactly what occurs so it can help to have 
this stuff broken into the best scheduling I found, the best sets and reps I found, having real people who have been through it, not just some guy in the Philippines. No offense. If I have a great coach in the Philippines, I would hire him, but you get my, like, not just like some random, like literally people who, who live and bleed this, who have been through it, who had knee surgeries or knee pain to then guide you through and coach your form and, and yada, yada, yada. So it's, and I had to make all that affordable because again, I couldn't have hired, I couldn't have hired Charles Paulson or anyone at anywhere near that level. That's, that's why I tipped and went that way. I owned a gym for six years. I didn't even think I would do online coaching. I just ran a gym. I still have to this day, I have 32 NBA, NFL, or MLB players on my online coaching. I'm just a coach. I'm not a YouTuber. This In December, I started making a YouTube video a day just to reach more people and get the data out more. That's it. I went from 4,000 to 193,000 YouTube subscribers. I don't know the algorithms or on Instagram, I've never had hashtagged anything you know so it's it's simple but i got to a point where i was like training nba players and realized that when i was having knee pain i couldn't have afforded myself like mm-hmm. do you see how messed up that is like yeah so i i had to make and and it was during and i was already starting to do the online coaching and then it was during corona that it was like my gym was legally shut down so it was like damn like i need to stay true to my purpose and just deliver this shit in a way that anyone anywhere can afford it is it as good as having an in-person coach, having an in-person coach trained in this would always be the best. That's why I work with my mentor, Keegan Smith. He trains guys who I then hire or they're in-person coaches. And we're literally like any day, our web guy has this, this feature where you can literally find geographically any member by geographic distance who's chosen, you know, to be able to be found. So you could find other people to train with who are doing this, or you could find a coach. So like, I'm literally an online coach saying, I'm also going to help you if you want to find a coach and not even, you know, mm-hmm. not even do the online and train with it or do the online. So it's affordable. And then like consult a coach once a month or whatever. So yeah, it's, you need the full picture, but you can see that for me to create the business that the 12 year old me needed, that shit would have had to be more affordable than hiring a personal trainer, you know? So that's why. Yeah, man. I mean, I think, and also for anyone that might be, might be listening or might be watching that hasn't seen Ben's stuff, like if you are at all even curious, go to his, go to his YouTube channel. Like there are, like I said, that's how I even became interested in and found out about this. Like I'm telling you right now. And, and like Ben, from what I've seen, it's, it, he's not BSing anything that he's saying. Like there are, if you really wanted to to do this, I, maybe I'm speaking out of, out of place here, but like, if you wanted to do this and you didn't want to spend any money, like you could go to Ben's channel and figure it out for yourself. Like you're not going to have the coaching and stuff like that, which I know I've, I've seen your interviews and I know that's a really integral part of it. But like, if you wanted to do but the there's exercises, no, there's no secrets. Yeah. yeah there's if you no wanted secrets. to do the exercises and like try it out right before you don't like not donate before you pay, like you can do that. It's it's there. Right. And I think that that's really important yeah. because, again, you're not acting like there's some secret, but it's the I know that the coaching is the that's what because like you have I know you can send in videos to every day of like, this is what my, you know, ATG split squat looks like. And it's like, okay, well, we're going to change this up. This is because like if you're not doing it correctly, you're probably not going to see the results. It's it's unorthodox movements. I look. I wish I could just have like a membership and not have to do coaching. Okay. Males in particular really mess up the form. Like you wouldn't believe it. It's like a comedy show, but I'm the same way. Like I would, I was messing up the form before I got trained by Charles and Keegan Smith. And I was, I didn't even realize how bad I was like butchering so many of the forms. You know what I mean? So look, Mm -hmm. I like, (laughs) if I was butchering, the forms before getting coached but but that's why we do that that's the only reason why i tested it thoroughly before even doing that as the service my business mentor at the time was like dude you can't even run a business like that coaching everyone's form like you have to you would have to charge more money for that or whatever but i was like i was small at the time and i'm like fuck it uh he's like you have to charge at least 99 for that i'm like great i'll do half that uh like that's just how i am you know so i was like i'll do half that and i'll coach the form and it's worked out very well because yeah, some people, some people just want the schedule, you know what I mean? And they do great with that. People are very different. I, I was more of an, an ego guy who cared what my numbers were. And it, so I was more likely to cheat the form, you know what I mean? So for a lot of people getting the form and then you go to each new one and, and then getting the form right on that, like for a lot of people, it can make a world of difference, but in terms of the overall data, yeah, like I, I don't hold, I'm not trying to make any secrets. 
the whole idea is just to get the data out. And we found that people who then get their form coached, we're seeing so many of our members now becoming coaches or just, I helped my friend with this. I helped like, like, so I've had people who have fixed like their entire team shin splints and you know what I mean? Like, um, like shit like that. So we find that our members who get the form coaching, there's a little more certainty, you know? Uh, but it's, but it's not complicated. If it was, I would, I would charge a lot of money for, you know what I mean? It's, Mm -hmm. it's simple. And my job is just creating a route where, where, yeah, you can do it. And then, and then you do know what you're doing on your own. You know what I mean? And I love that, man, because so many people, it seems like, especially in fitness and in, in just in health in general, I think because of how many people are doing things, they try to make things seem more complicated than they need to be because then that's a good way to sell. Exactly. It's a good way to sell and it's a good way to upsell, right? It's a good way to be like, well, no, 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 I'm charging this much because look at all this crazy stuff I'm having you do. And like, you need, like, that's why you're paying more instead when it comes to like, when it comes to me, like I make videos, I talk about how simple it is to lose weight. Like there's no secret formula to it. Right. That's, that's the fact. And then the same thing with you, it's like, it's these simple exercises, but the, the secret sauce is just consistency. It's doing it over and over and over again and doing it correctly, which is really important over and over and over again. It's, it's not sexy, but it's, it's the truth. Like it's just how it works. Yeah. And then, and then everyone's at some level differently economically too. So Mm -hmm. my business just has to be true to the 12 year old kid with knee pain. It doesn't mean it's the only way about it. A lot of people can afford it and should get people who are certified in what I do. You know what I mean? That's why I'm like pushing so hard. Again, I wish probably by the time some people are watching this, it'll already be out. But like, uh, it's a very important thing to me that people can find ATG certified coaches. So everyone's going to be at some different levels. I probably would have done the online and then maybe like, I was a very hard worker. I was always doing things to make extra money. I saved up like $8,000 by the time I was 16 to buy a car. So like I, I was capable of like working and saving money. So if I was able to save up $8,000 by the time I was 16, somewhere in there, I would have been able to afford and, and pay for a coach. You know what I mean? Maybe not every day, you know, but to do a consultation, make sure it's going right, whatever, you know, so, ev- but everyone's going to be somewhere different on that. Some people, maybe you're having to do the jobs I was having to do just to help support your own, you know, uh, your, maybe your mom can't even, you know, pay rent and you're, maybe you're 16, not saving up for your car, saving up for her to pay rent. Yeah. Do, do like literally a month and then fucking cancel. And I have no hard feeling. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm everyone's going to be somewhere. So for me, it just had to be true to that, but we're all somewhere different. Like, you know, uh, gotta be options for everyone, but it's not, it's not complicated. The personal work though, you're paying for someone's time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's very, it's very different paying for someone's time. Yeah. Like as a trainer, like you, you do have to charge, you know? Yeah. A hundred percent. Well, man, dude, thank you so much for, for coming on. I appreciate it, man. This was a very fun conversation. I, I felt like it was, I had a feeling it was going to get pretty, uh, pretty intense and that's exactly what happened. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy, man. I am, I'm very, very thankful for you, for you coming on and sharing your knowledge. And I know a lot of people that even just in the chat right now are super excited to check you out and I'm sure, uh, the people that listen later will be. So dude, seriously, thank you so much again. Dude, I'm, I'm super grateful for you super grateful, not just for you recognize my channel, but to have made another friend, like so many of my best friends have come from social media. So, Mm -hmm. uh, I I think it's a beautiful thing. Like, yeah, you're not in my yard, you know, but it's like, we're sharing our ideas. And even if it's online, the people we surround ourselves with, like it makes, there's enough negativity and negative people and things that could drag us down and make us feel like shit. You know what I mean? So, so to me, it's just, it's just awesome. Every time I add one of these people to my circle that's like okay awesome now i have this guy who's like also positive you know what i mean so mm-hmm. huge huge appreciation for me and luckily the baby stayed asleep i was yeah. positive <laughs> i was gonna have to be taking him so big thanks to my son for staying asleep <laughs> awesome man well i i appreciate it i'll let you know when this comes out and uh, I'll, I'll shoot you a link all right awesome dude thank you all right peace out dude